It's Marie Barclay here from Why I'm Sustaining. Welcome to part two of the core principles of harmony and connectivity with the fantastic Arthur Rutledge from New York City. I'm sure you will enjoy this just as you did part one. Enjoy. Hi, it's good to see you again. Yes, and welcome to the Why I'm Still Standing platform. All right. Such an honor to have you here. I'm happy to be here. So how, how good is this, that the Lord has brought us together again? <laughs> That's right. That's right. I was going to make sure to it. So what other core, like you, we've spoken a bit about harmony, but what about connectivity? What could you mention about that? talked about this one of the first book that I was given in my adult life where I came into my learning again after school was um, 13 years ago it was uh, the book the tipping point was given to me mm. by Malcolm Gladwell he has a number of books blink and outliers yes and yes we did talk about that. and even a newer one which I plan on getting is definitely uh, cerebral to say the least, and it's and quite thick in uh, uh, its content. Mm. But it really, it breaks down three archetypes that make the world go round. Yeah. The salesman, the connector, and the maven. The yeah. maven of the knowledge. And I've, I've always, uh, my background is in sales. I've done sales all when I was growing up. That was the main job that kept me a flow in between entrepreneurship and, and finding me yeah. on a whole scale of things. The connector, I didn't realize what that is because when I was growing up, it wasn't something that you knew about or readily knew about as a connector. It doesn't seem like it would turn out to be much money, if anything, to mm -hmm. to live off of. And yet it's very is un it's kind of unspoken because we know about the salesman, we know about a person who you ask for directions or what's this country like, the maven, you know, that person, you know, is there is give information, wealth information. But a lot of people don't understand about connection. And so when it comes into connection, you know, that word, you know, Ubuntu, that word we talked about earlier, you know, I am as you are, is the true compassion of one who wants to put connected. Yeah, others, others before them. Mm. Well, not just before them, but just because a lot of people that connect people, they have this, they, they might come from a selfish place. Mm. Uh, and so you know for me as a master connector and this is the reason my friend gave me this book 13 years ago or maybe even uh, time is going by so fast even maybe 15 years ago he gave me this book the first six months i didn't i put it down i didn't pick it up i wasn't in that place of reading yeah and then after i made my mind up to to read it I still didn't start reading it until two months later. And so when I identified with what it looked like to be a connector, I understood why he gave it to me. Because mm -hmm. at that time, I wanted to make sure that people had a nice experience. And I related to a nice experience, how I would look at a nice experience if I were around or allotted uh, the privilege of being around people who are like-minded, who are like me possibly, yeah. that I have been able to meet, have met by myself. Mm, you're absolutely right. And so that, that I mean, it lends into an empathetic understanding in a way that I was doing events and I was traveling. Mm. And every time I just felt that it was, it would be rude not to introduce one person I knew to another person mm -hmm. I knew. Yeah, who, who or, or that you knew had similarities, right? Or both had interest in, say, for instance, chess or um, yes. like yes. jogging and, um, yeah. Yes, and I don't even think that I, at, at, the, at the beginning parts of it, I don't even think I cared. Yeah, <laughs> right. That yeah. they got along famously Something or they common. had yeah. similarities. I might not have seen that. It might not, at the beginning phases of what that looked like in my evolution of that, I just knew that I was the glue. Mm. And I knew that I wanted to be around this person and I wanted to be around this person. And then I just had to figure it out. Mm. That's what I was left with. 
until was, they you know, were ready no, to release you. Not work yeah. and overanalyze it, but that just wasn't me. I just yeah. I said I just left it up to my creative understanding at that time to say, hey, so and so, here, so and so. Let's go out. Let's hang out, and you can decide if you don't like. It. And yeah. a lot of people are like no. And yeah. Stuff. They can decide then, uh, which is what I was trying to say before, they can decide then to remove the glue, which is you, to remain, uh, to remove the commodity that's joining them together. Well, I'm always a part of them too, right? Uh, it, it, anything that you start, that you uh, create, it's always going to be a part. If I had an idea that di- you couldn't see, which comes from the inner side of my brain, like the seed that, you know, that realizes itself and it grows, I don't know how the tree is going to grow. I can assume, you know, they say assuming is putting your foot in your mouth uh, a lot of times, right? When we make assumptions, we do it automatically in our lives. Mm. So I can over-evaluate what that looks like and, you know, the pros and the cons, or I could just worry about being the strong person that I am. I've always been strong-willed in that way, but not overbearing. Mm. And I guess I can only, that's the fact, that's the proof in the pudding. I can only guess that because I was able to be that person, so many people, I, I know for a fact that much more people are okay. friends. Their friends were so profound, their friendship became so profound. I didn't have to be there. The story lends back to me. But then the tree flourished into other trees. It yeah, flourished that's into wonderful. the acorn. That's, that's sort of what I was trying to allude to before in terms yeah. of getting rid of the connector, the mm-hmm. connector, which is you. Well, not getting rid of, but, you know, forming that relationship. And now, now hopefully they will then go on and do the same thing. And that's how we have this wonderful thing. And they do. And, the, and, and again, even now, it's beautiful because, you know, you know, we mentioned our friend Tom, and people, and now I've even, you know, got you back on Clubhouse because now you got a nice little family that you could hang out with and things. that yeah. Even if, yeah. even if you still need you know, to keep working on me. <laughs> but yeah, but even at the beginning, maybe it didn't rub off you in the same way. It's just about who introduces us. Yeah. You know, yeah. things to us, right? And we are, I mean, in transformation, you know, we, we leave the word selling behind. We want to put the word enrolling behind. We are enrolling creatures, right? We're yeah. enrolling masters. Even if you don't think we're masters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we enroll our friends and family on what we want to do, what movie to watch. Oh, this was a great movie. You should go see this. Mm. Mm. Oh, you love it. The actor was there and you're like, whoa, you know, a lot of us think it's selling, but it's not selling when you, when it's coming from the heart a lot of times. Yeah, you're right. Thinking about it, when we're in our true state of being, mm. our authentic selves, then we're able to be empathetic to whether somebody likes it or not, but be autonomous yeah. to the result. Move to the thing. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, and so with the practice of that and the person that I was becoming, because I know lots of people who done e- do events and they're the most consumed, cons- uh, prideful person, people that I've met, not all of them, just some mm-hmm. that I know. But on the other side of it, I didn't I wasn't that person. How am I different from that person? Well, I'm not different from that person, except for what I've taken in and what I what I, the things that I appreciate. Lynn Twist says I, I love what you appreciate appreciates. Mm. If you appreciate in the, in the things that you're intentional on a good side of things and you're putting the optimisms in your life, you're going to have great results. More of that is going to a- attract to you, right? Yeah. You can pessimism and doubts and, and around the anxieties and fears that we're assuming on, we have, it's not factual because it's in, that's in future or in past. We're not being present if we're, mm. if, uh, if we're, you know, wrecked by what that looks like, then we're going to feed what that looks like. Pride, cynicism, stouts, yeah. and unnecessary anxieties mm. that comes from us not being awake yeah. to where, what that growth is. And so connection on any level, whether it comes from uh, me or somebody who feels like they're not good at connecting people at all. It's only 
just deciding to do it for the right reasons. Yeah. Uh, and, and not letting the reasons be the only reason we do it. That's right. And the operative word being to act, right, to do it, to physically do it rather than ponder on it. Am I going to do it? But to physically do it, like the Nike ad. Um, yeah. So you're currently doing coaching now yeah. through the Interunited as well as other outside of that as well. How are you currently getting your candidates or your the clients? By me being connected. Is that through Clubhouse? Is it where you know? Well, like, well, that that's the great thing with me right now because I've stepped into, I've embraced who I am, and so who I am is an enroller. Yeah. And what does it take to be a good enroller? Well, it helps to be empathetic or compassionate, and you also have to understand that from where people are is even more. So you have to have a bigger vision of mm. people. Mm. So because my vision is so big for other people to be able to step into their empowerment and whatever that might look like at any given time, my approach to it is very earnest. Mm. And people can understand earnest. Yeah. They can understand, you know, if I'm up here and I'm going on about something and I'm not giving them a chance to think or giving them a chance to put it together or figure it out mm. and things like that. I use a lot of others. I don't use a lot of you. And I use a lot of me from my experience and where I'm coming from. So people can feel comfortable with meeting me halfway. That's mm. part of the enrollment. Mm. And mm. then it's just at the end of the day, being out there, putting myself in front of people, not mm -hmm. being in fear around that looks like the action steps. You know, what helps me is what I coach people into, which is the be, do, have. Be the person in my mind that I understand that to be. Give myself some adjectives that really put that in, spark that. And if even if I don't feel like it, do it, do anyway. it anyway. <laughs> Yes. Discipline. That's called discipline. <laughs> Mm. Uh, you built a good habit until it becomes a discipline. Good habits take about three weeks mm. to, you know, a month to step into. Um, three months, sometimes 90 days. A solid habit. For it to form, yeah. Yeah, to form it. Three months to get a good habit going. And to get a discipline would be closer to the nine-month year mm. I would put for people. Mm. And that you know that side of it so i it's give a people bit like abstaining from alcohol or complete you know finishing um you know not having any more cigarettes or choosing not to have sugar you know things like that so yeah it's, it's a, some people it's discipline to have yeah. the willpower yeah 100 percent. it's some people that have the willpower to go cold turkey on the next cigarette or you know or drugs mm -hmm. you know they mm -hmm. maybe have to go to rehab they just make a decision but it follows with action like we're just talking about yeah the yeah. side of it and then to create that and so it's a certain part of that enrollment so me identifying me as a connector as an enroller on that side is a certain part of that where my vibration and my frequency because that person that i know that i am i already know that those people will also find me. Yeah. No, you're what right. I'm manifesting Absolutely. because I believe in it wholeheartedly. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you with that. And so it's the finishing touches on uh, of enrollment when it comes to that, even to the part of just connecting. Yeah. And, and I love that whole thing, right? I've always been a natural networker. And usually when I meet people, I'll I'll know intuitively whether they're going to be in my life for the just the, that day, for the next few months, or for the rest of my life, right? I, I already know from a, 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 you know, coming from within, I, I already know. To give you an example, the lady's name is Robin, but she's, I didn't know this at the time. We, we became friends and it was actually at an Elvis Presley concert that I'd gone to with my sister and her boyfriend. And it was out at a place called Parks, which is where they built that huge um, satellite, you know, that helped the first person go to the moon. Anyway, that's the country area where I'm speaking about. And I met this woman 
she was having breakfast over there and it was just this um, very old style pub that we stayed in accommodation in and we were down having breakfast. And as we started to talk to each other, she told us that she was a nurse and that she was traveling up from uh, Melbourne to Brisbane for work, right? So, so rather than flying, she preferred to drive because it was just so much nicer. The experience was nicer. She could pack everything into a, a laundry basket so then she could easily have it accessible. So rather than being in a suitcase where you'd have to open up the zipper, you know, so that simplicity to me was just a bit mind-blowing because I'm thinking... This woman, you know, she's quite high up in her, um, you know, and what she does uh, because she, I actually found out later, later on that she was the head of midwifery and she was about to retire. But we're still friends on Facebook to this day. Like that was like three years ago. It's just a, a, a very small encounter, which seemed like a small encounter, but it ended up being quite a, you know, a long term relationship but you can make it anything you like right with any sort of connection that you have with anyone whether it's a personal relationship or a business relationship it's in your control Arthur you're the one that controls that so it's up to you whether you want to go up and speak to that person who's sitting in the corner of a nightclub and doesn't have any friends sort of thing and you getting to know them in order for you then to connect them with someone else that you know, although you might not know of um, their background or, you know, what sort of activities they like, you still have that knack, right? You still have that, that internal sort of vibe that will eventually connect these people or, you know, for you yeah. to network them or yourself. Yes. Uh, exactly. So I hope that made sense. It went around a bit of a long distance. Oh, no. it's a practice so i got good at this discipline over time Mm. and it multiplied my talent because it was around something that i was strong in yeah well yeah because so much experience life experience that put me into a place where i was able to be around people and to connect with people myself Mm different backgrounds, different nationalities, different professions. Mm. Experience that accumulated to the person I was and then able to even see what was the next level of that. And so now, yeah, I can walk into a room and I can pinpoint just from brief sighting. Yeah, just from uh, the observation that you're doing. I can just go up and put my vibration into effect put my frequency into effect and 95 percent of the time it's it gonna is, the people are going to be receptive to what that looks like it's mm-hmm. almost a superpower it feels like a superpower but yeah. it's not something, <laughs> but it's not just mine alone I Arthur, people, it is a superpower <laughs> well it takes patience yeah and it takes, again it takes presence persistence and patience you know, a loving patience with ourselves to be able to step into that. So anybody, I think anybody could step into it, even if you're an introvert. I know some introverts who are able to do that too. It's just getting rid of the clutter. Yeah. Access yeah. in the own way, the, the, the things that don't serve us, to come to the same conclusion that I'm already at. Mm. If you can get mm. that talker, that the talk no walk, you know, mm. walker out of your head. Yeah. And have clarity. It helps you to step into your intentionality that much sooner. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. So good for the soul. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> it is so good. I mean, I, I love that you're a reader, that you're a lover of quotes. And um the last time we spoke, you said that you would be, you know, you're thinking about perhaps putting out a book filled with your quotes or, or, you know, just things that you've come up with, thoughts that you've come up with yourself. And I I love that because there's a lot of stuff on Instagram and social media, Facebook, that it's just regurgitated, right? People eat it up and they spit it out and it's just information I don't like. So when I do find a quote and, and it resonates with me at the time that I you know, I usually post about it. And I love that you're into personal development, right? You have this background that goes way, way back in terms of just wanting to be better. 
so then you can then show up for your people better, right? Or or for your tribe to be attractive. Yeah, well, it's funny. I I, I, I didn't have the intention of what I look like in different yeah. parts of my life. But it just and yet, every time I just was always stretching myself. Yeah. It was that's a, probably in my strength zone. Some people who maybe don't have that characteristic right away, um, you know, it, it, it might take a little bit more practice. But I just had a lot of enthusiasm for things. And I always did the things that I was passionate about. I always followed my vision mm. of myself, lent it yeah. to the vision of my place in the world. Yeah, that's so good. And, <laughs> and so I followed along with. <laughs> yeah. Look like, and I, I kept expanding. I just, mm. I just kept, and but I do have to say that a lot of it wasn't intentional, which yeah. is the sad part. That's why I'm an opsy map now, which is a late learner uh, of sorts. I, I'm proud of that, actually. You know, uh, polymath is not somebody who is not tried and true. You have to put yourself in pretty much harm's way. And yeah. over things fairly easy and, and come to grips. Mm. Uh, one of the books that helped me do that, um, and I and I really I was in a, a multi-level marketing business, one of the first ones that I, I stepped into and it had great mentorship. Mm. Um, and it really helped me to mold that because I had a lot of different people who are not just multimillionaires. But always said it, you got to read the book if you want to have the cash. Mm. <laughs> you got to read the book. There's no way around. There's no shortcut. You know, uh, leadership yeah. is available daily. No shortcuts this is one of the rooms I have in Agape. And I mm. and it came from, it derived from what that type of leadership really helps people to understand. And I, I understood <clears throat> one of the biggest things was if a leader can't learn, he can't teach. When you get to the place of teaching and you do that effectively, that means that you're actually also able to learn. Yeah, definitely. It's a circle that happens with, and so I was expanding without really even realizing it because I was intentional about the things, the, the little things that kept me stepping into that. So I stepped into this book, Eric Fenton, mm -hmm. uh, I think. Uh, the book goes is is called Go for No, mm -hmm. and we're so stuck up as a society. I'm saying yes, 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 no, yeah. Like mm -hmm. th that is our fear point, right? We hit the terror barrier right there when we're trying to connect our conscious with our unconscious, and we run back every time because a no is just such a big punch in the gut, right? Mm -hmm. Slap in the face. It it steps into our ego. You know, it says, I don't have to take this. Why do I need, I get enough no's from, you know, my parents. I get enough no's from my spiritual leaders. Mm -hmm. I get enough no's from uh, society that tells me what I can and can't do. People don't like to be told what to do. And I heard this just recently, change. People are willing to change, but they're not open to change if you're telling them change because the person has to become aware of what they want to change first before you can even start the process of changing and a lot of people can't even get to that stage so and so that go for no this great book just gave a, a leap into this man's life not to ruin it for anybody definitely go and get it but it just gave a future perspective of this man who was in a place in his life where he was ready for the change. He knew some things were uneven. He had a happy-ish life. Yeah. But there was but some, some things that he would definitely have changed. Mm. And he got a chance to talk to himself and others that knew him as the powerhouse of his authentic self which was five, 10 years down the road. Mm. And he was able, so, you know, I always, I, I laugh because for me, if I went back and told myself at 20 or 21 or even 25, that this is who you're going to become. This is how many lives you're going to change. Even just on the connection basis, even before I stepped into coaching yeah. or speaking or, or, you know, or giving that, if I was to tell him that, 
he would laugh at me. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. if I brought that young man forward to the now and he sees all the things that I'm doing and all the people that I'm inspiring and cultivating, things like that, and he took that back with him, how much more would he or sooner would that connect to his unconscious by way mm-hmm. of the emotions that he would be able to feel and find harmony with himself mm. and, and find resolution in that type of understanding. What could he bring forward from that place? Mm. And so that this book was really profound, but I just didn't. And so when I started, so after that book, when I started reading to other books or learning something or listen to the mentors at that time, I took in that much more with the understanding of the vision that I should have for myself. Mm-hmm. was bigger because I related to what that looks like. What if I, that person, that maybe that book instigated me thinking, me 10 years ago is waiting for the realization or the fruition of who I get to be. Mm. Yeah. It's powerful. <laughs> no, I get that. While you were speaking about that, I was thinking about this podcast that I was watching of Mary Morrissey and a guy called Donald Walsh, and he wrote um, Conversations with God, right? I I think that's what it's called. But he was saying that during one of his darkest moments, you know, he looked up to the sky and said, is this it? Is this this all what my life is about? And he heard this voice um, that he said is from God, and, and the voice said, you think that your life is to do with you but your life has nothing to do with you it has to do with the people uh, and the how you're going to change their lives or how you're going to touch their lives so when you figure out what that is when you know that that's when your life is going to change Arthur so from what you just told me that it sort of seems like that was the point in your life where, where you knew that you needed to do, that there was more there. Um, but that's why I, lo- I love that, uh, you know, what he said, because it, it also helps me sometimes too, because sometimes you can just go off on your, you know, own tangent and not sort of give a shit, I guess, about what everyone else is thinking or wanting. But then that sort of keeps me, keeps me grounded in terms of being on that mission to try and help as many people like you're you're saying you want to touch 1 million people's lives and when you get to that 1 million you want to go again and again and again right if i think of some of great leaders that we've had in the past mlk weekend just passed martin luther king here it's a big holiday it's not yes, a lot of- that was last monday wasn't it yes it was and so if you told him i mean behind the grave he's there he he understands it. But if you told him 10 years before that you one day you're going to have a whole holiday, you're going to be one of the only African-Americans in yeah, history have that has been. his own day in, a, in one of the, in the biggest countries that's ever been in history, memorialized, even though he's martyred at the, at the same time. He wouldn't have believed it. Uh, and it is about that, isn't it, too? Life. Life is about that. Leaving a legacy, right? Mm-hmm. Leaving yeah, something legacy. to find. Yeah, 100%. For someone All else to continue, right? Whether it's your child or a sibling or wh- yeah. whatever. Gandhi had no, he had no plan to be the father of India. Yeah, he just he, became. He, he, he just, was, yeah, he was. He happened was like what you just moment. said before. It just happened. <laughs> he was in the moment. Yeah. And that moment, because he was authentically who he was, and his vision was so big. Yeah. yeah. People just gravitated towards him. They just, they said, "I want to be like him. I want to know what he knows." And uh, he I started off with this circle. That's how I. This is kind of how I describe it. You start off. You, I'm just using this example, but it can be mm-hmm. anything. But you start off as a circle. And as you take on the challenges of your life and you do it with a constructive, open-minded type of take in what you can, mm-hmm. learn from where it is, get up, wipe yourself off, whatever that looks like. And you do that with people as well. So you're growing the same people the same way you grew from the circle. 
And as you continue to grow, I call it the heart. Mm. Even though a heart is not a circle, uh, but follow with me on mm-hmm. as your heart. Grows, yeah, she, as she, your, the real physical right. heart doesn't even look like a. a yeah, it is. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like a circular. It's kind of you know. Yeah. It, it, it. But as you continue to grow, as your heart continues to grow, your circle of influence starts to grow. And so this is more of the circle of influence that happens. And as and if you continue to go in that way, your circle of influence becomes bigger than you even mm. comprehend. Than you, yeah, and, bigger than you. you and yourself. people fit in it. And so it's not you, it's the people inside it that makes it bigger. And they're doing that thing. And you have this whole culture of people that's moving in the same direction. Mm. I mean, yes, it's a movement. And it's something that's even more profound than that. Yeah, it's powerful. It's just powerful beyond words, right? Because it, yeah. because it transcends time. Yeah. It transcends space in that way. If you could transcend space, time, and meet where it's also time, space, you yeah. got to say you have it in the same place and you're the conduit for what that looks like. Yeah. You Then you see like, society change society norm you know you know it starts from a tipping point as the book that i you know lend into well just you know the leaders of a small part of it growing into each other but then oprah she went back and told her when she lost her job she got kicked off because they said she wasn't pretty enough or you know didn't have what it takes you know and things like that and she was walking down the down to the elevator and she had her box in her hand with all of her stuff and take the elevator down the stairs and she you know people shaking their heads saying sorry you know and this and that of her da, da, da. Mm. she's walking to her car she's opening up the car and you she's putting the box in the trunk and you come up to her 20 years before come to her and say you're going to be a multi-billionaire person that's touched everybody in the world mm. on some level mm. what would she say are you crazy she would call the police she probably would break down in tears and actually try to fight you who knows <laughs> right exactly but, yeah. but how that plays forward which is you know that's great things play forward as long as we're present yeah and it is about that right it's about giving to others so then they can then go on pay it forward to others as well. Yeah. How would you like to end our podcast, Arthur? You know, would you like to leave it with one of your favorite quotes or would you like to leave it with something for our listeners to remember? What is your closing word for the day? I could keep talking with you, but. I don't know if I have a closing word, but what I can say is that it's been a privilege to be here on here with you and uh, and people like you who are cultivating and building your world from the inside out. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of willpower and you're going to conquer amazing things because that's you you stepped into your authentic person. Mm, thank you, Arthur. Yeah, and, thanks. And, and so that's the most empowering thing. And anybody watching is, it's for anybody that's daring enough to look past, look before the future to really come into their present. Present is what we have right now, in every mm-hmm. moment now. You know, we got to get this done now. We got to put this together now. Yeah. Now, find the, I always tell, and Tom always knows this as well, as I mentioned before, uh, I always say, be uh, be the joy in your journey. Mm. Be the joy in your journey. Yeah, be your own cheerleader, right? <laughs> yes, be the joy in your journey. If you need to sit yeah. back, if you want to slow it down, you, you know, it's your reign of the court. You yeah. know, the basketball is always in your hand. Whether you want to, yeah. it's up to you to take the shot. If you want to pass it, if you want to slow down the momentum, you know, if you want to pick up the pace. You know, if you want to slam dunk it or lay it up or shoot yeah. from the point, you know, the, the the whole sports analogies are yeah. in play. But that's how winners play. And they don't 
apologize for being no. down. It's all very, it's all done very unapologetically. And if you're talking from a driving perspective, right? If you're into um, motor racing, then it's not just about applying the accelerator, right? But it's about knowing when to ease off the accelerator. I think that's a that's something to be mindful of from a leadership perspective, and it's something that I learned many many years ago, and that I can watch others whether they know when to put the accelerator down and when to ease off and it's those people that I gravitate towards because they have that um, call it what you like right but they do have that focus they have that discipline about knowing when to shut up and knowing when to you know bring on tenderness and whether whether to be forceful or whether to be soft you know or use more of your soft skills as opposed to the to the hard ones so but i think life takes takes restraint too (laughs) yeah and sometimes it's harder not to do something than it is to do something right or harder for you to not say words of hurt than it is for you to spit it all out, right? Say if you, you know, were angry at your husband, it's easy for you to say the hurtful stuff than it is for you to say the the loving stuff. So restraint yeah. and embrace are both skill sets. Yeah. I've absolutely loved talking to you, Arthur, and you know, getting to know you a bit more. And I, I was actually saying to Tom uh, earlier when we spoke that this whole process of putting together the, you know, the the whole practical side of it, you know, because I like to do it in processes where I'll speak to the person first, get to know them a bit more, figure out what the heading is that we're going to be talking about in the podcast, and then having the second one, which is when we record and then we even have a third time where we sit together and listen to the full recording before it's actually published. So there is an actual process. But just with the whole putting it together, I've just learned so much about myself, right? I I know that it's about the other person and I'm bringing them on so then they can have a voice to be able to, you know, share it with the rest of the world. But you know, the intrinsic stuff that's happening inside me is just, yeah, it's just, there's no words for it, Arthur. It's, it's quite, a, yeah, it's such a great feeling to know that, you know, that you're doing something beyond you sort of thing. And it, very similar to what Donald Walsh said before, you know, when you start sort of concentrating on people and how you touch the lives of those people, that's when your life is going to that's when you're really going to see significant change. So thank you so much, brother. My brother from New York. It's, always, it's one of my favorite towns. And <laughs> I just know, I can just, I sense, you know, and I have these great intuitions. I know that we're going to be sharing a real stage one day. I absolutely know that. You, Tom, you know, and any of the other guys that want to come along and come clubhouse and it'll be so cool. <laughs> it's going to happen then that's right (laughs) yeah let's make it happen yeah thank you for having me i appreciate you welcome arthur you're Uh, welcome have have you on hashtag into united as well after we uh get this one uh off the ground yep (laughs) excellent (laughs) all right arthur well thank you so much for your time again and it was brilliant we'll have to come back and have another chat thanks again thank you bye-bye thanks love There you go, listeners. There is episode 11, Done and Dusted, with Arthur Rutledge from New York City. And I love how he uses the term, be your own joy. So if you take away just one thing from, you know, both of the podcasts, it's that be your own joy and be the own owner or uh, instigator of your basketball. And I mean, obviously, basketball is a metaphor. Use whatever you like, but it is about the people's lives that you touch and how it is that you change those lives. It's been such a valuable two parts, and I hope that you've enjoyed those as well. All right, take care until next time. God bless, lots of love, and we'll see you in episode 12.